Okay, we're rolling in three, two, Hi, I'm Kimberly Blaquet, your host of Safety Pause, and today we have a very exciting show. We have Franklin here, yeah, and he's going to. Go ahead and do it again. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, like, no, yeah. okay. There's technical, te technical difficulties. And we're coming back from a commercial anyway, so yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, okay. Well, he can give me like a little less audio, just a tiny bit less. You want me to whisk? I can go lower too. No, you're no. fine. Okay. I just want to just there we go. Cool. That's good. Okay, camera roll. Three, two. Hi, I'm Kimberly Blaquet, and welcome back. We're here with Safety Pause, and we've got Franklin, and we are so excited that you had time to join us. Thank you. You've got a lot of exciting things going on, don't you? Yes, I do. You're saving a lot of animals these days. I, I have saved uh, my, my fiance, Chinchilla. Well, she's my wife now, but I've saved her Chinchilla. Okay. Well, can we tell our audience what a chinchilla is? And can you tell me too? Because I have no clue either. <laughs> well, a chinchilla is actually, it's, it's, gr it's usually gray in color. They have different colors, but it's normally it's gray. And it's a small animal. Like a, It's actually technically a rodent. Okay. Um, but it looks kind of like a rabbit. A lot of people think it looks very similar to a rabbit without the long ears. Um, it has a little bit shorter ears, but it's, it's that kind of looking animal. Okay. And where are they from? They're actually from uh, the Andes in South America. That's where their their natural habitat is. All right. So how did you get him here to Houston, Texas? Well, actually, my uh, fiance had him as I met her. She already had the animals, and so that was kind of a condition of uh, of dating her. Was it was ha? Uh, uh, love my animals. Love me. Love they, my animals. There you go. Well, we know there's a lot of people out there that are <laughs> like that. So right. well, great. I'm sure our audience loves that. Okay. All right, well, why don't we talk about what happened with one of your pets? I think the name was Smokey, right? Smokey, yeah. He actually had a heart attack. She was vacuuming the room like she does quite often. But this particular time, I think he was startled. He must have been sleeping, and she started to vacuum close to the cage, and it startled him. Okay. And he started running back and forth in the cage. He, uh, he stiffened up, fell over, and then she picked him up, and he, then he, he went limp in her hands. And she was screaming and came into me. And, and uh, when she got to me, I actually performed CPR on him and brought him back. Well, wow. Okay, so let's let's back up a little bit here. So basically, your Smokey had a heart attack. Right. And your wife called you, and then when you came into the room, you how did you know that he needed CPR? What was well, the... She had told me what happened and how he stiffened up and then went limp. Okay. And I actually, I'm a CPR instructor. Oh. So that, that helped me out See? a little bit there. That, that helped me People, out. People, animals, this is good, okay. So um, I kind of did a little evaluation on him. I took him in my hand. He's laying on his back. His head was back. His arms and legs are just out. And he's completely limp. So I, I, I looked for any kind of any signs of any kind of signs of breathing. I, I didn't know where to check for a pulse. Right. Okay. But I because he's furry, right? Yes. Yeah, so okay. And, and who knows where to check for a pulse on a chinchilla? So I uh, noticed there was no breathing. He was completely, you know, without without any kind of motion at all. So I just went into CPR. That's the first step I, I thought to doing. She wanted to take him to the emergency room, and I figured by the time he got there, he'd have been dead. That's very so good thinking. So I went into um, infant CPR, two fingers on the chest, and I gave him a breath into the mouth, and I held my hand like this so that any, any air that went in, because the lungs work on positive and negative pressure, any air that went in would go into the mouth, but anything extra would just come out the side of my hand, and I wouldn't overinflate his lungs. Wow, that was smart. Yeah. Good thinking. So, thank you. All right, so then basically you started giving it CPR, and then did you notice that, at, how did you notice at, well, any after movement? I, or? After I did about three compressions, or three cycles of compressions in a breath, um, I noticed that his chest was rising and falling on his own. He was breathing, actually, okay. at that point. So I stopped CPR, and I told my wife that, uh, and I said, look, he's breathing. And she got really upset, and she started, oh, my God, he's going to be brain dead. Right. Because he thought he'd just would start breathing, jump up, and run off. Okay. But it wasn't the case. He needed some time to recover. Right. So we sat here on the couch for about 30 minutes, and he finally came to. Wow. Yeah. So would you kind of suggest to our audience that probably if you have pets, uh, having CPR knowledge would be that, very That helpful? probably would be beneficial. I actually talked to a cardiologist friend of mine who told me that that's exactly probably what happened. And if you hadn't done the CPR on him, he probably would have died. And so... It, it wow. actually it works. I never would have thought of doing as I teach it. I never would have thought of doing it on an animal. Yeah, I was but, a lifeguard too, and but as, that's amazing. Yeah, and I, and I teach my uh, my students 
that you want to be mechanical about it. You don't want to have to you think. That's why I take the class seriously, and, and we, it's very repetitive in the class. And I said, that's for a reason. So you, you can build upon each step you learn. You build upon it, and you do go back, and you do what you learned you know, at the beginning. Right. Because so, at first, you are a little, you're, you know, your adrenaline's going. This right. is your, you know, your pet. Your, right. It's like a part of the family. So. And so that's wow. what I did. I just went with it, and it worked. Well, good. So it would be a good idea for for uh, animals to, or people to know a little bit about, you know, how to protect their animals. Okay. Well, Franklin, we really appreciate you coming out today. Thank you. And um, I know you've got some exciting things going on. Um, for those of you who watch Jay Leno, Franklin's going to be on Jay Leno, so you'll be tuning into him there. Isn't that next? Yeah, uh, it was last month. Oh, it was last month? Yeah. Are they going to do a repeat? Uh, they, they, I think they, they're going to show a repeat. and. I think they might have showed one. Okay, well, good. <laughs> well, then we'll we'll let our audience know when the repeat because I think that they'll be interested. And everybody out there, tune into tomorrow when we're going to be talking about. We've got Dr. Um, Robert Hernandez, and he's going to be talking about how he saved his horse. Thanks. Thank you. Pretty good. <laughs> so, everybody, everybody.